Thank you for clicking on this video. Right underneath this video, you can click like, share, subscribe if you want to. And if you want to make a financial contribution or even become a monthly financial contributor to the content of this YouTube channel, look down in the comment section. You can click on my Patreon page. You can also reach out to me through my email address. I want to talk some about Psalm 34, P-S-A-L-M. There are 150 of them in the Old Testament or the Hebrew Scriptures. This one is Psalm 34. It's attributed to David. You may remember David as the killer of Goliath. He was also the second king of Israel. Um, this psalm is attributed to him at a time when, in his younger years, he was a fugitive. Uh, he was running for his life from King Saul, Israel's first king. The monarchy had gone to Saul's head. He had become a narcissistic, sociopathic leader. And then David killed Goliath and became Israel's darling. What do narcissistic, sociopathic leaders do about competition? Any guesses? Saul devoted, I think, years to trying to kill David, chasing David all over the place. When David wrote this psalm, he and maybe some of his buddies were hiding in the recesses of a cave. David had tried to hide out in Goliath's hometown. That didn't go so well. And when his cover was blown, David pretended to be insane. They kicked him out of town, probably deemed him too pathetic to bother killing. And so, in a cave, he wrote these words. And this is verses 1 through 3. I will bless the Lord at all times. God's praise will continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble or broken or helpless or disenfranchised hear it and rejoice. Magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt God's name together. It sounds exactly like something a person would write when hiding in the recesses of a slimy cave. What do you make of this? For emphasis, let's go through it one more time. And I'm going to add a little something to it. I will bless the Lord at all times in a cave. God's praise will continually be in my mouth in a cave. My soul makes its boast in the Lord while in a cave. Let the humble or broken or helpless or disenfranchised hear it and rejoice in a cave. Magnify the Lord with me in a cave and let us exalt God's name together in a cave. Breaking it down, I will bless the Lord at all times. The word bless there literally means to kneel. So I will humble myself in God's sight on all occasions. God's praise will continually be in my mouth no matter what the circumstances are. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Think bragging. Um, in other words, I'm going to give God credit all the time, no matter what's going on in my life. Let the humble or humbled or broken or helpless or disenfranchised or marginalized 
hear it and rejoice because maybe they're the ones who are most open to this kind of transrational blessing and praising and boasting in the Lord while in a cave. And then verse three, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt God's name together. Now the word exalt means to lift up, but magnify, think about the word magnify. When we magnify something, it becomes bigger. Do you ever have a disproportionate emotional reaction to something so that it it occupies it occupies more space in your mind, in your heart, in your feelings? Okay, magnifying the Lord means we focus on who God is, not on what the cave is. We concentrate on who God is. We magnify God by blessing the Lord at all times, praising God on all occasions, giving God credit no matter what's going on. I mean, if we're going to be magnifying anyway, why not? Why not look for the signs of God's presence in our lives, no matter what the circumstances are? I never got the knack of floating, like in water or on water, but I understand how it's supposed to work. When you're floating, you're not trying harder, that was my problem. You're trying easier. I mean, it, it has to do with the way you're breathing or holding your breath. It has to do with relaxation. But, but while you're holding your breath or breathing in a certain way and relaxing, you are also making thousands of little decisions about how to stay buoyant. Psalm 34, one through three is exactly like that. It's about perspective. Guess what? Even when we are in something resembling the slimy recesses of a cave, we can choose our perspective. I will bless the Lord at all times. God's praise will continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the broken ones hear it and rejoice. Magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt God's name together. I hope this is helpful to you. Grace and peace.